Hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Silverdale, Washington, and we're working on a Lippert leveling system on a coach. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the fault code that we're getting on the uh, Lippert electronic leveling system, and then I'm gonna walk you through what I'm going to do to troubleshoot this problem. Uh, we don't know what the problem is. Uh, the Lippert leveling system has a touch panel, it's got a control module, it's got a motor, a pump, a reservoir, solenoids, all kinds of things. So let's begin this journey and we're gonna follow the trail of 12 volts to see if you can figure out what's wrong with this leveling system. So here we go. Okay, when we start this coach, I want you to see that blinking fault code, okay? So when I start the coach and I try to extend the jacks or retract the jacks, I'm getting this fault code. Now, right out of the gate, you can hit the stop button and hit the start button, and I'll do that now, okay? So I've now turned it off. I'm gonna turn it, I want you to be able to see. I'm gonna turn it back on and it's gonna basically do its test, telling you that he's not level. I'm gonna hit the auto button, and I expect my auto light to turn on, and it does. At this point, I expect my solenoid to engage, I expect to hear the pump running, I expect to hear some things, but I am not hearing anything. So let's go to the module and troubleshoot there. We're gonna become the module, and we're gonna basically follow all the wires. We're gonna be following 12 volts, 12 volts into the control module, leaving the control module, etc. So let's do that next. Now on these Lippert electronic leveling systems there's going to be a control module and typically the control module well pretty much every time I've ever found one it's going to be on the outside uh, in one of the compartments I've never in other words I've never seen it inside in a cabinet or a cupboard it's always outside in a compartment usually mounted to the roof or the ceiling of the compartment and on this coach we have the door there and then we went through all the compartments we found it inside here so what you're looking for is a control module like this um, the wires, now if you go to our website, myrvworks.com, and you click on the resources tab, you'll find a um, um, service manuals t section within our resources tab. And navigate to, or you can search for leveling systems, and um, you'll find a Lippert section there, and it'll have the Lippert electronic leveling system. So get that manual, and that's going to help explain what all these wires do, okay? being out here in the field, that's exactly what I did. I went to my website out here in the field and got the manual. So we have a parking brake and an ignition right here. Uh, this one goes to your control panel, which we've already looked at with the blinking lights. But this is where we're gonna be camping out on this um, harness or this connector right here. All these wires are, are important wires. So at this point, is there something wrong with this module? Is there something wrong with the control panel? Or is there something wrong with the solenoid or the motor or something on the other side, okay? So we have to prove that. We can't just say, well, it's this. You know, other technicians can do that. But my works, we're gonna find the smoke, we're gonna find the smoking gun. So I can't just say that there's something wrong with this module until I prove that, okay? So <clears throat> by going to my website and getting my manual, what I was able to determine was, here we are, um, what all these colors are. Now in this, there we go. In that connector, I've got several wires. I've got a white, a brown, a black with a white stripe. I've got a gray, a green, a blue, a purple, and a red. And then I wrote over here what they all do. Okay, so I have a chassis ground plus minus. I've got a pump plus minus, and I've got, um, uh, what is that? I scribbled something. Road front, road rear, curb front, curb rear. So basically, when the module is energizing these colored wires, Okay, those pins, that's when I expect to see voltage on the other side where, where these wires go. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I don't have a flashlight with me, but you'll see that I've, looking, follow with me on this. So I need a ground reference. So I'm gonna use the same ground reference that the module's using, okay? In other words, I don't wanna use the ground of the chassis because what if there's a wiring problem here? So I wanna use the same ground reference that the module's using, so I'm gonna, reference brown as my ground, and then I'm gonna reference the black with white stripe for my solenoid, okay? And so what I've done <clears throat> on these connectors, if you can at all avoid it, you never wanna stick your meter in through this side because you can damage or, or widen out one of those pins. You always wanna try to come from the back side of these connectors, and if you see, you see the, the, the where they crimped it, and that's what you wanna grab. If, if you, you can't always get it from the back side, but if you can, you can try. Um, so here you see I've got black with white stripe is I'm using as a as my red lead and then I'm referencing brown which was ground I'm using again I'm referencing it now so what I'm gonna do is connect that into the module 
and with my leads, my meter, connected to the module, I'm now reading voltage going to the module. So right now we're at zero volts, so we're going to reset the module because it was faulted. We're going to reset that, and I expect to see 12 volts right here. So with my leads connected to the back of the connector here, we're showing 12 volts feeding the module. Okay, that's that's the key. Well, actually, we're we're actually feeding the solenoid. So if I've got 12 volts there, don't I have 12 volts going to my module and then leaving the module going to my solenoid? Okay, so so we have proven that we have. Here's my map again. We are using brown as ground reference and white with black stripe going to my pump solenoid. So now we're gonna go see if we have 12 volts going to the pump solenoid on the other side, okay? Okay, so here was a situation where, uh, where I was talking about taking your, your, your meter and sticking it in the back side. This is all, the, this is like a waterproof type um, Molex connector, if you will. And I wasn't able to get my leads in it. So they have these piercing type uh, leads. So you just grab it around the installation. So here I have the brown and the black with white stripe. And then here I have my, my 12 volts. So I know at that point that I've got 12 volts from here, the 12 volts comes from here, that I've got 12 volts coming here, going through my wire to my control module, leaving my control module and coming back to me on the solenoid feed, okay? So my module seems to be doing okay. And out of all these wires, quite a few of them are, are proving to be okay. So I've pretty much eliminated, knock on wood, I've pretty much eliminated that there's a wiring problem and I'm also at this point thinking there's nothing wrong with my control module, okay? Um, <clears throat> now I have 12 volts, like I said, I'm, uh, 12 volts originates here, goes through my harness to the control module, comes back to me, and it also makes a trip up to my um, keypad and the keypad showing a fault code and I'm able to put it in auto mode and, and I've even played with manual mode. So I know my keypad is fine. And so again, I don't think it's gonna be the module. Uh, I do know, I hate to say this, here's some text, we'll just say, let's throw a new module in there. Uh, and usually that's when I get called in because other places have just swapped out parts without actually following the trail. So here we're following the trail of 12 volts. So here we are, 12 volts here. And so now I'm gonna leave this meter on because I only get about 90 seconds of time to play with this because what'll happen is the control module will time out after about 90 seconds and then um, it, it just did, it just timed out. So that was 90 seconds of me rattling on. So it just turned itself off. I also heard a clicking sound here. So that tells me that maybe uh, my solenoid is in fact working. So it timed itself out. So I'm gonna leave this meter on here and it'll give me in feedback to let me know that I'm actually following a trail of 12 volts. Now in this instance, the trail of 12 volts took a little bit of a break, he timed himself out. Okay, to go to go ahead and reset. Okay, we've reset, now I've got another 90 seconds to play with this. So now I've got one meter on the other side. Now I'm gonna play with this meter here. Geez, Darren, how many meters do you have? Um, quite a few. Um, if you know my background, I was a, uh, played an electrical role. Uh, reset again, there we go. Okay, so now we're back to 12 volts. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the motor frame as my ground reference, okay? And let's put this one up here so we can see it. I'm gonna put it where I can see it. You may not be able to see it, but I'll see it. And uh, okay, so uh, we're on 12 volts DC. So I here's power coming from my battery, okay? So this is a big switch, okay? And if I come here to this switch, this top screw is in fact the same wire that's coming, it's the black with white stripe is this top screw. So I know that my solenoid's getting voltage. So let's see the battery side. So that's the control side. Reset. There we go. Um, I've got my son in there helping me hit the reset button uh, because the system's timing itself out. So. We know that the solenoid's working, and in fact, I feel it clicking in. Ooh, wow, it's even hot. It's got some heat to it. Um, so now I'm gonna check my voltage. Now this is 14 volts coming from the battery. If the solenoid is in fact made, I'm gonna come over to this side. I have 14 volts making it through the solenoid. I'm gonna follow this wire down here. I have 14 volts going to the motor, but the motor is not running. So therefore, I believe that we found the problem to be this motor because isn't it a true statement? Let me reference this side here. So now I'm actually thinking it's the motor. So I'm gonna use this as negative. This is, I've got 14 volts going directly into that motor and the motor's not turning at all. So at this point, I think our trail of 
12 volts has led me to a failed motor. Um, yes, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the problem. Now I'm gonna refer I've referenced the ground on the motor casing, and I got 14 volts, and I've referenced this. And wonderful, leave it off, do not reset it, do not reset it. So now that it's not reset, okay, so here, here I have the red lead, which is going to be coming from my control module. I've got all of one volt. Okay, there's just some ripple in there. And this pin up here, which goes to my solenoid, it's also one volt, so it's basically turned off. Um, I have no voltage coming from there. Okay, uh, I'm thinking, folks, it's gonna be the motor, and the reason why is because the motor is dead right now. I've got, in other words, I've got zero volts going to the motor. But then when I had 14 volts going to the motor, it was not working. There's one more test I wanna to do to prove my theory. I'm gonna get my own known good 12 volt source, and I'm gonna hit it on these two screw terminals to see if that's gonna make it right. And if not, then I'm gonna call it that we have a bad motor and we need to replace this motor. So um, I wanna make sure that uh, I've got my... Yep, okay, this wire goes to frame ground, and this one comes from battery plus. So. Okay, so let me get my jump box. I'm gonna prove that the motor's bad. In other words, what I'm gonna do is a bench test on the motor in place. I'm gonna eliminate all this wiring. I'm gonna put my own known good 12 volts, and if the motor doesn't work at that point, we have a bad motor, okay? Okay, so I have verified that this side, that this wire is in fact screwed to the frame, so I know this is gonna be my negative side of my motor. Uh, so let's, so I've got a jump box. He's giving me 12 volts, and uh, let's grab that. That's, Okay. Now this side, I expect, when I touch this to 12 volts, I expect that motor to, write, to run. Okay, and I got, I got nothing, no motor. So therefore, um, I'm gonna call it folks, we have a bad motor. So what at this point is, down here on the bottom, I've got a, a model number, I've got a part number, serial number, we know it's a Lippert system. Uh, we're gonna go to lci1.com, which is Lippert's uh, website, and we're gonna pull up the Lippert electronic leveling system. Uh, they have a sheet on there with all the part numbers for all the motors. We'll get a new motor ordered, and when the motor comes in, we'll come in and put it in, and I expect good results. Putting the motor in is pretty straightforward. Two bolts, pull it out. There's a collet up in here. Um, pretty straightforward. Okay, folks, so what we did was we followed the trail of 12 volts on troubleshooting this system. I hope that it was helpful to you. Um, it could have been anything. If it would have been that control module, then what we would have found is we're getting 12 volts to the control module, but it's not sending anything back out. Um, it could have been the solenoid here because we would have energized a solenoid and no power would have passed through it, but it's passing through it. And so by following this trail, we've eliminated a, quite a few things. We've made our little map right here on color codes to know exactly where to test my, my test for 12 volts. Um, but at the end of the day, it turned out to be the motor, the, the motor that runs a pump. And so that's what's bad. So if this was helpful, thumb it up. That really helps when we get the thumbs. Um, subscribe to our channel. You'll get some new videos when they come out. Um, share it with your friends and remember happy camper say my RV works and I think that once we get this motor swapped out we're gonna have a happy camper and so this is Darren from Silver Dull Washington signing off see you down the trail